The book Bioplastics, a case study of bioeconomy in Italy, was presented on the 6th of March 2013 at the European Parliament in Brussels, during the conference organized by Kyoto Club, going by the name of Bioplastics, a case study of bioeconomy in Italy in the light of Horizon 2020. Biodegradable and compostable plastics have been recognized by the European Commission as a valuable part of the bioeconomy. The book Bioplastics, a case study of bioeconomy in Italy, aims to showcase the solid bioeconomy potential of Italy and the contribution of market pull measures for bio-based products in triggering new investments in innovative biorefineries and societal benefits in terms of waste prevention and consumption patterns amongst citizens. The book gives an overview on the context in which the Italian case study is born, starting from the environmental context, analyzing the normative framework and outlining concrete solutions, adopted in order to build a new industrial system, based on green chemistry and innovation, and able to start from the local areas. The book shows how the connections between the biodegradable bioplastic sector and the virtuous development of the quality compost industry and separated municipal waste collection have set in motion a whole series of virtuous modes of action and collaboration initiatives between various stakeholders. Enterprises, institutions, research bodies, trade associations, consultancy companies and regional authorities, generating a connective tissue that is ideal to promote a change in the development model, putting the efficient use of resources at the centre. The Italian case of bioplastics constitutes a key opportunity for a new development of the whole Italian chemical industry and could be a significant and tangible example capable of showing that resource efficiency is a strategic necessity for Europe but also an economic opportunity capable of restoring regional growth in areas which are being hit by the current crisis. Allow me to start uh, from these uh, introductory words uh, that I've uh, really appreciated in this uh, uh, booklet. They are taken from uh, uh, Professor Fitoussi, which clearly, as indicated in the very first pages, says we are basically focusing all our attention on the present and we are depreciating the future. So is that true? Are we really doing that? Are we really, let's say, in that kind of mood that we forget about the future? I personally would say no. Uh, the raison d'etre is this meeting that has been organized and uh, is about the future. We are talking about research and innovation. It's also about the future, but it's also about our future needs and see how we can make sure that you know, we can turn that into solutions, solutions to people. Bioeconomy has become what is, is called in jargon a holistic concept, uh, something embracing different sectors such as agriculture, food, health, energy and environment, to name but a few. And uh, the uh, witness to that, I see many uh, uh, people involved in exactly in these sectors. Uh, furthermore, we believe that uh, bioeconomy has a very important role to play in uh, all European future industrial policies. An industrial European policy which has to be found on uh, uh, innovation, on, uh, uh, on research, on uh, sustainability. The question is uh, to change uh, totally the model of economy. And to do this, uh, it's very important to have case studies. We need to change strategy and to uh, restart from roots in the local areas. So the territories have to, be, to restart to be the center of the development. This is the real uh, message of bioeconomy. It's a cultural change which has to um, uh, uh, be made by everybody of us. And so we need uh, more uh, uh, trust uh, among the different parts. We, we need uh, more wisdom in the use of the tools because the problem is uh, uh, bioplastics on plastics are not, or chemistry, or uh, are not, is not good or bad. It's how human beings are using this type of tools. This is the real critical issue. And so it's a question of culture. And it's a question of uh, the uh, egoistic approach to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, the, in the society. So we need really to put together uh, different cultures to create bridges and not to separate. I feel that this small case which uh, uh, we can present here can be a demonstration of what we can do. There are great opportunities but great challenges. And therefore I do say, uh, uh, Chairperson, that this is the one area that I think we need more conversation about. If we saw, as we did in the food versus fuel debate, a, a retreat from an original position, 
it doesn't all go well for any um, industry reorientation. And, and Europe needs to reindustrialize. The bioeconomy is a major part of that. And for countries like Ireland and, and Italy, I dare say, but for those of us who have a very good natural resource and who see potential, not just for our food, but for other products from that natural resource, uh, these are very, very exciting times if the policy space is correct. The chemical industry remains an incredibly virtuous industry in terms of energy intensity, uh, the, its capability to generate uh, innovation and sustainable solution. Obviously, when you look at the biomass-based chemical industry, you always have three steps, which are very important, and I think we spoke about that so, so clearly today. Is the access to the feedstock, is the innovation to create more application, and is the demand that the, the application should, should generate on the market. If the Porto Torres, we briefly spoke about that. This is an example where you put together a reconversion of an old and non-competitive site into a sustainable, step-by-step -step, uh, uh, investment that will reabsorb the labor that was employed uh, in the previous complex uh, in a sustainable way. So I do think that having practical examples of the bioeconomy in action gives some clarity, not just to policymakers and scientists, but also to people about what we're talking about. Um, and the way I look at this is very simple. We're talking about trying to uh, have a world and a European Union, but it's a global problem, that uses natural resources to do many, many things in a renewable way. And to use the resources we have more efficiently, more effectively, and in different ways than we've done in the past. Thank you for the book. Bedtime reading is always very welcome. Um, <coughs> but it is good, because when you go home and talk in Ireland, you can actually say, well, look, this is a real example. This is what's happening. Um, working with the Italian uh, model, uh, Europe at least has good examples of where we can bring this forward. The case study that we are today presenting is, is a virtue case of industry, legislation, uh, citi citizens that changes their lifestyles. I mean, it's a win-win in every, in every kind of fields. So this is why I, I think it's a good thing we have to promote in Europe as well as in Italy. We consider bio-based products and bioplastics as one example of them as an important way of creating major technological breakthroughs and at the same time reducing environmental and climate impacts uh, of our society and the way we live. They are innovative technologies and they have the potential to create growth and jobs in Europe both in a rural agronomical context, but also in an industrial context. We want to trigger a broad European reflection on how to optimize plastic waste management from cradle to cradle. At the same time, we are now assessing options to reduce the use of plastic carrier bags, which, as you may know, are among the top 10 marine litter items. Some member states are already taking action, some to great effect. But it is important to have an agreed framework at the European Union level to address this issue more effectively and in a coherent way. Ladies and gentlemen, your conference today demonstrates that the debate about the contribution of bioplastics to the achievement of our sustainability objectives has already started. We have to understand that the development of, uh, of uh, uh, compostable and biodegradable uh, um, plastic bags in Italy and in Europe uh, will have uh, a very important uh, outcome in the reduction of the pollution. But at the same time, this is not only an issue of waste. It's also an issue of the uh, economic development and energy security of Europe because reducing the dependence from fossil fuels for the production of uh, chemicals, for the production of plastics, uh, is very important uh, in, uh, um, in the context of the global uh, competitiveness uh, in uh, energy supply. If we invest in, uh, in bioeconomy, if we invest, uh, invest in uh, biodegradable and compostable uh, uh, plastic bags, we invest in the reduction of armor subsidies for fossil fuels. I hope that the European Commission will support the Italian policy in this direction.
we expect uh, around uh, 4,000, we say 3,500 uh, 3, jobs, but it's close to 4,000 jobs from the agro-industry, agro agriculture, agro-industry, resin producer to the uh, 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 plastic converters. So that's, uh, this figure seems small, but it's today the uh, number of people uh, employed along the value chain for this uh, uh, type of market in France. So we will doubling uh, from the uh, present level the number of employees, not in 10 years, but in 2014. So we are very pleased to have heard that uh, uh, decree uh, tomorrow will be signed in Italy and we hope to, uh, to follow you uh, as quick as possible and at least for, for beginning of, of 2014. I hope uh, that uh, this book uh, can be a starting point uh, for uh, thinking about uh, bioeconomy in a more systemic uh, view. Uh, and uh, thank you again uh, for uh, your patience. Thank you.